let's be more positive here. Team overperforming, overperforming what your expectations were this year. I have three, and I really don't know which one to go with. I'm not going to okay. say Kentucky because we already talked. How yeah, great Coach Kentucky of the Year, is. self-explanatory, 100. percent I'm going to go Texas A&M here. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to have an honorable mention when I'm done, just for my own fun here. But I'm going to go Texas A&M. You looked at Texas A&M. You knew they were going to look Texas A&M. We thought they were going to be good. They have a head coach who's been there, done that. They seem to always be always in, does you know in in Omaha. Like I get that, but. It seems like year after year, they're kind of top 10, back half of top 10, top 15, and then they get hot at the end of the year. They straight up just look like, we talked about it, I think they're the best team in the country. They look like the best team in the country. They do it all. They hit. They pitch. I mean, the pitching staff has been, that's what kind of has been the biggest surprise, I think, for all of us, is how well they've thrown the baseball this year. We talked about it a lot on the last pod. Um, They have been... They've been outstanding, and again, I didn't think we'd be sitting here talking about, like, you look at it, and you looked at A&M's roster, and you thought, best case scenario, maybe they would be a top five team, top three. I didn't think it would kind of be like starting to separate themselves at the end of April as the best team in the country, but that's where we find ourselves. So for me, it's A&M. Um, and then just real quick, shout out West Johnson. I mean, Georgia, first year in there, they've, you know, they're, they're playing much better in SEC, Obviously, they have Charlie Condon. What he's done for the pitching staff, he lost a ton of guys. He turned that roster over completely. The pitching is still their weakness, don't get me wrong, but they're finding ways to get outs and get wins, which is something they hadn't done really in a long time, and they needed something fresh in there. I think he's done an outstanding job in his first year, a hire that was kind of questioned a little bit, to be honest, and he might not have been their first choice. Um, But he's gone in and he's done so far, I think, uh, if you're a fan, like I am, of the Georgia Bulldogs. I think it's exciting to see what's going on in Athens. They're definitely trending in the right direction. Yeah, I think that Georgia is a ticking time bomb in this sport with their location, proximity to Atlanta, and and obviously everything that comes with that. And then on the Texas A&M point, I think what makes this team so why we probably weren't expecting them to be as good is because two of their top three and their three-headed monster are both new additions to the club in Braden Montgomery and Gavin Grahovic. So I think we all knew Jace Laviolette and we knew Braden Montgomery's addition would be huge, but how huge, right? He was really good with Stanford, but was he great? Was he spectacular? That's a conversation. So, um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about Braden Montgomery. Don't worry. Team overperforming for me, Florida State. Florida State, I think that, um, you know, coming into the year, we knew the potential. We knew Cam Smith was a guy that a lot of people in draft circles were high on. He had a great Cape Cod summer, so he came in with a lot of helium, but he didn't have a great year last year as a true freshman. James Tibbs is another guy at the top of the lineup. Um, Daniel Cantu is a guy that he had a home run against Wake Forest this uh, this weekend, and I think it was our friends over at 11.7 tweeted that he looked mad running around the bases, and it was the grand slam off of Michael Massey, and he did. I love the maroon on maroon. Like, those jerseys look so good. Like, those jerseys look really good when they wear those and, and rock those on the road. Um, and then, obviously, on the pitching side, like, the, the two-headed monster and – Lighter needs to come back and be healthy. But what they've gotten out of Jamie Arnold has been true ace level stuff. Like he's truly competing for, you know, being the best pitcher in the country. And you're getting both of those guys back. This is a young club. Now, the problem is, is they lose Tibbs and Smith to this year's draft, but they bring back Lighter and Arnold. Take the good with the bad there. Obviously, you're going to lose guys every year for the draft when you play at Florida State's level. But if they got those two back, and they can run it back with this club because, again, this is Link Jarrett's second year. right? We talk about this with a lot of coaches, how long it takes to kind of establish depth. That's what makes what um, what Coach Backage has done at Clemson so impressive. Uh, this is Coach Jarrett's second year there. Um, he built Notre Dame like it was a contender, and we see what Notre Dame's been since Coach Stifler's gotten over there, and I have nothing but respect for Coach Stifler, but it's a hard job to win at. Um, and Link Jarrett had him rolling. Um and first off, what, what a freaking awesome name to Link Jarrett. God, I was born to coach baseball, it seems like. But what they've done in two years, we're going to talk a little bit about them and a little bit um, about the questions that come with them. But they are definitely a team that is overperforming up to this point. 